for those of you who don't know me, I know it's quite a lot of the call that do. Uh, I'm Claire Edgson. I'm the global technical lead for Power Platform here at Signard. And my role is primarily around delivery and making sure everything for Power Platform works across all our hundreds of deliveries, but specialties are security and governance. And a lot of people know me as the platform guardian or the guardian of the guardrails. So that's where I come into normally, but recently I've been having lots of fun with Fabric and how they join together, which is where this is gonna come from. You can always find me on LinkedIn if you wanna ask staff questions afterwards. So what is Fabric? Those of, those of us who've been hearing this Fabric word almost as much as the joyous co-pilot constantly, what does it actually mean? What does it actually do? Well, it's a group of things. It's nothing drastically new. It's the way that it's been brought together. Fabric is kind of the low code version of data like Power Platform is to being able to do coding. So Fabric's a word that's thrown everywhere, a bit like Copilot is, but what do those parts make up? So Data Factory, we've had for ages, it's had a pretty new look and feel. And from a Power Platform point of view, there are a lot more easy ways to integrate with it. We've now got Synapse broken up into parts. So we had used to have Azure Synapse as we knew it with lots of bits I could use, but now it's got into distinct areas. We have the data engineering area, which those of you who are data fans will absolutely love. It's got such cool tools. We've got the data science. This is where our data bricks and more of our deep machine learning analytics can go on. We've got the data warehousing, which comes into fabric, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. Real-time analytics, which is spectacular when it works, it's mostly there. Power BI, which has been our friend ever since reporting services sort of round to a halt. And the cool new data activator. So there are a whole bunch of tools which are mostly familiar to us and you're kind of going, yep, yeah, well, what's that to do with Power Platform? I'll come to those in a minute. Now, Fabric's being held together in the same way as Microsoft structure the rest of their platforms by different pieces. It's got lots of inherent AI built into it. Whereas before we had to go and find AI, AI models, it's got lots of open AI already built in. Plus we can use all the other AI engines too. Workspaces, those of you who were come from the Power Platform side, it's environments for Power BI is workspaces, but we have the ability to share workspaces and use them in ways we didn't before. We get these universal compute pieces. This is us being able to decide how fast and how slow we want to do things. Microsoft are working fast in this area, and those of you who are very familiar with Fabric will probably know more than me where that's reached to much today, but this is gonna allow us to decide how fast we do our maths, plus all our other data analytics. For me, one of the big things that's coming into here is one security. This is one of the new pieces within the fabric world that will touch our platform. One security, if you've heard of the security co-pilot, that's come out that was actually created using AI. One security is their answer for the data world, but it's got lots of AI built inside. And this one security is actually going to overlap on Dataverse as it grows and finishes coming out properly. We have one lakes. Now we've had data lakes for a long time in Power Platform. So what's this one lake stuff? What's the difference? Some of it's a difference in terminology. We still have these stores, these containers that we put compressed data in and we read and write from it. That hasn't changed. What has changed is the way it's worded and the way it's constructed in the background. So one lake is now the name for all what all the data lake features we used to have, but it's basically a way that they're going to be integrated together. What we knew as data lakes has become lake houses. Great names, thank you, Microsoft. But lake houses is our now new storage areas where we would have used a data lake gen two to put stuff in. 
we now have a lake house. Within that lake house, we will have warehouses and our data. So we can have unstructured and structured data and we can work on them between the two. Now, this isn't a full fabric session. This is fabric for Power Platform. So I'm not going to go into that part today. We may do another in the future. Um, but that piece about the one lake, that's the new part. Now, those of you who've already got data lakes today and you're going, well, where's my data lake going? What's happening to my today's data lake? It's staying where it is right now. We're going to still see data lake Gen 2s still existing, probably for another couple of years. But new things that get created, we will use the one lake side. One, the security will be better. Two, the integration is going to be so much easier. And three, it's going to be that fluidity between the different systems. So I'm going to start to show you a little bit what Power Platform looks at this stuff to give you an idea of what's coming. And this is sort of me kind of signing up a little bit more of what's coming. So one lake is known as the OneDrive for lakes, for the data, like we have OneDrive on SharePoint. The Synapse link we already had in Plaid Platform is now looking at one lake. We can still create data lake connections too, but it auto connects to one lake first now. And I'll show you that in a minute. These lake houses create links. I'm going to show you connecting the data to a lake house and show you the fact our data appears in the lake house from Dataverse. What we have to be aware of when we use the Azure Synapse link as it is today, we're not creating a copy as we did in the data lake Gen 2s. We're creating a link, a live link. So we have to be mindful that this data sitting in Fabric on using one lake is my real data. And we will see some implications to that in a minute. So what do we do? Now, I'm going to walk you through some of these. I've got some slides you can have afterwards if anybody's interested. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually jump out this slide deck and take you to a real environment because I think it's far more fun to do it for real. So let me just come into the admin center. So Power Platform Admin Center, what's this about? Why do I care? Why, why are we here? Those of you who are used to this screen now, a little while ago, we got this page. This can't page see tells... Can't see your demo. Can't see a demo. Can't see the demo, did not let me share. We love Teams, don't we? Let's see if Teams will let me see. Can you see it now? Yep. Yep, cool, thank you. James, you had your hand up. Is that what you were gonna ask? You couldn't see it. Yes, I was well going to say yes. Perfect. So th this screen's been in the admin center probably four or five months now. What this shows me at the moment, it's showing me all the connections I have. Not everybody yet. That's coming. It would show me any on-premise gateways and it will show me any VNet gateways. That's the Azure version. So why have I brought you here? We need to create a connection across into fabric in the first place. Now we can do it here, or if I come into Power BI, I can go into workspaces. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right one. Yeah. We, we've got the ability to do the same kind of thing in here. If I come into there and connections and gateways, hopefully you can still see my Power BI screen. And lo and behold, Power BI have exactly the same screen. So what do we have to do in here? We have to create a connection to our data. So let's have a little look at what we've got to do. It's semi-intuitive. It's Microsoft. It's never going to be perfect. So we want to do cloud. 
the first thing it asks us is for a connection name. Now, most of us would go, yeah, it's, it's this environment. We call it a name. That's the first place we're going to fail. One of the tricks Microsoft have done is we need to know what environment we want to connect to. If I come back up here and I go, and, or I can even go within the admin center, if I go and find my environment, I need to know my environment URL to make this connection. So let's go and pick one. I'm just going to go and pick this particular one here, which is, happens to be where my COE kit lives. And I'm going to grab my URL. Let's read it to do it. There we go. Let's jump back to Power BI. So completely unintuitive. I need to make that connection name my URL. That's the first place we tend to fail. Then I need to go and pick Dataverse, because as you can see in here, there are hundreds of things I can make a connection to. And lo and behold, it asks me for my environment URL again. Really, really helpful, Microsoft. Thank you. So this is the one place most people fail. They'll call it environment by its real name. They might call it test. They might call it whatever. If you do not get that URL in that connection name, it doesn't work. It is on the roadmap to adapt, but that's where most people have got stuck. You've got the option now to use service principles. Just for the today, I'm going to use OAuth2 because it's easier. We can use single sign-on which is great because that's going to make sure any queries that happen should be used as me. I'm going to talk about security in a little bit to tell you what's perfect, what's not. Mostly we'll use encrypted and organization. And I can choose whether I want this to use on-premise gateways or not. Can you see my create button still isn't lit up? And you can go up and down and you won't know what's wrong. We have to go and re-sign in our credentials because it's double checking it's us. And this again is a trick that most people have got stuck on. So let me log into my little demo tenant. Now I have the magical create button. And it will hopefully whiz off in the background. It's gonna, I'll leave, I'll leave that thinking while it does it. Yeah, it's, uh, I suppose I've already got something called that. So let me go and show what, you, what that looks like here. So this is that environment. Some of you will already have the Azure Synapse link sitting here. Some of you won't. Now I've been in here and used this one before. Let me take you to an environment that's not used it before, just to show you what it might look like out of the box. If you haven't got the Azure Synapse link, I'll add that in the slides. I've got a little page to tell you how to add that in, but most of you will probably have it by default. Anybody who's created a managed environment, they put it in there whether you want it or not. So whether I've actually asked for one link, whether I've set up Fabric or not, this comes up with a default of Microsoft One Lake now. You used to have this blank, and I had to then go and be able to set up different areas, different things. It will default to one lake. It doesn't mean to say I can't use a gen lake anymore, but it will default to one lake. So let's have a little look at what a link looks like. Actually, I'm going to jump back to the other environment because there's more data to play with. Just give me a second. So the one lake link from new, what do we look for? What is it looking to have? Now we have to have uh, workspaces with fabric enabled. You can set a trial up for free and at least go away and play with this. If you want to get into the whole fabric licensing, that's a whole extra topic, but you need to have a fabric enabled workspace to be able to get this to work. So what does this new link look like? I want to be able to take tables from my Dataverse and I want to be able to put them in Fabric because I want to do reports or analytics or take that data to the next step. So what do I have to fill in? For this to be really simple, I'm just going to use my pay-as-you-go. I've got a 
multiple resources. So I happen to have picked a resource that has a storage account. If you already have Synapse Analytics workspaces set up for something else, you can use them. But if you're just trialing this for a minute to see what it does, just using the subscription, the resource group and a storage account from Azure is all you need to get going. And I've got this in my blog if anybody wants to go and have a look at what that is. You can set enterprise policies, but if you're experimenting, you don't need to do this. If you're doing this with real business data, you probably want to see if you need to set this ID piece up. So what do we get next? I get every Dataverse table in my environment, the, whether it's ones I've made, solutions I've created, solutions I've installed. If I've got Dynamics, all the tables will be there. So I have a wealth of tables in here. So I just want to select a few just to sort of show you what this does. So I'm going to pick on Audit Log. Let me go and see if I can find a couple of others. I'll pick Account and I'm going to pick uh, let's pick something else, let's pick category. So I've picked some Dataverse tables I want to share in a link into Fabric. So if I click Save, you can see at the moment it's mapping a lake to the environment. At any point, if I, as it asks me, yeah, it's just because you can see I've already got one here, um, I'm going to show, show you one I've already got because, of course, the demo gods want to be against me because I'm trying to demo it live. If you have already created a workspace link, it will typically error at this point. But the question I was trying to ask at that point was, has it asked me where to put it? The answer at this point is no, it hasn't let me select a workspace. So we may need to go through and point it to the right workspace. It may give you that option. What we're seeing, depending on where you are in the world at the moment this week, is if you're in Europe, you may not get to choose the workspace you want to send it to. Fabric is live now in GA, but we're still seeing a few little glitches. Those of you that may be in the US, it's working fine. As we've created that select button, it should ask us which workspace we want to go to. It's not perfect yet, it's coming. So let me cancel this and we'll go and look at one I made earlier in true Blue Peter style for those of you who are in the UK. We used to have a program that always had a backup made. I have a backup made. So this particular link has got all my, these tables here synchronized into date from Dataverse to Fabric. You can see it's been created in Fabric. You can see how many times it's synchronized. And you can see that these are all currently active. You can see they're happening at different times. So what's happening as the data changes, it will automatically update the Fabric side. It's a little bit of a misnomer here. It's saying it's a sync. It's not a true secondary copy. It is almost a live version of my Dataverse. Now, what you'll start to see across the top, for those of you who have got anything with Apache Sync, we're starting to be told exactly that where Apache Spark's being used and anything older is in there. We're getting lots of fabric messages, lots of synapse messages within our Power Platform. And that's a little unsettling for some of our people that are Power Platform admins. Why am I being told about Apache Spark? It's all part of the family now. We're getting our messages coming across. So this is what the Dataverse side looks like. I can go in and I can manage which tables I have. And this is just the same as we manage tables in the old data lakes. So I can actually go and choose a particular table. I can then start to work out what I want to do different. I can see how often I want to do it. And I can be able to adjust that piece. So let's go and have a look at what we get in the Dataverse. Now, once you've played with this two or three times, you will find you get lots of things in your workspace. 
So it's worth knowing what your environment URL is. But let me go and show you what this looks like. Let me discard these. So remember we looked at all these connections. We can see where we've got an org level. This is our org levels. These are my different environments that have been connected. So what does it look like within the workspace? So I'm now in what we used to know as Power BI. We get all these different connections. Now I've got some data flows, I've got some lake houses, but it's these. These are the ones where it starts with the word Dataverse. And if you can see this says Dataverse COE Kit B, which was the name of my environment, can you see we get three parts? I get something called a semantic model. And those of you who aren't familiar with the updates in Fabric, that's what we used to call was the old data set. We get a SQL analytic endpoint. OK, that's new. And we get a lake house. So the lake house is the outer here. This is our container. And within it, what it's created for us is a data set just as we had in Power BI, and we've got a SQL endpoint. We'll come to that in a minute, why we're interested in that. But what does it tell us? What's it giving us? So it's confirming the name of the workspace, which happens to be this URL to my Dataverse. It's letting me see what's there. And if I go in, it's gonna behave. Let's go and look at the endpoint. When we want to be able to get endpoint data to do APIs or to connect back in, this will be that SQL string. We'll come back to that in a minute. But what does the semantic model look like? It's going to let me in. Are you going to behave? Yeah, there it's showing me the tables on the right. They keep changing the look and feel faster than I'm looking at it. So on the right hand side here, we actually have all the data that we want. These are all the things that we had. So I could now very easily go and build out a Power BI directly on these. Can you see here it says to select more than one table and view summarized data? I can create a paginated report. Now, those of you who aren't that familiar with Power BI, you may recognize bits of this. I may just be a Dataverse person and I don't know what this, what to do. This has instantly taken me to a place where I can start building things in Power BI. I can be able to start building out different things on my tables. And this is really walking me through the low code side of it. If you think of how we started with Power Apps a couple of years ago, and it was drag and drop, and it all just opened windows, and we're like, well, cool, what did that do? This is the same kind of feel. I may have no Power BI experience whatsoever, but it is guiding me through where to go. And I could start to create, add some tables in here, and I'm just going to play around and just throw things in. It's not going to be pretty by any means, and I can start to look at what fields I want. And you can see data is automatically coming through. I might not know what I'm doing yet, but this is super powerful. What this has done is allow me to create reports on my Dataverse. So what's different from creating Power BI directly on the Dataverse as a direct connection? There are a few things in here where my governance head screams a little bit, because do you remember when we created that connection, we said single sign-on? That, what that should mean is that if I had access to the data through that environment, I should have access to that data here in this workspace. It kind of works. However, this gives me all the data. It's not yet got it quite right. It doesn't filter that data to just what I can see. It's coming. It will be with us very soon. 
But the benefit you can do here is maybe you don't want people building and having access directly to your environment, but you do want them to consume some of your data. At the moment, your Power BI person needs to have the credentials to your environment. They need to have enough access to get to your data. We're surfacing that data in another place that can be used by other people, which is great and is bad. So my security head says, oh, I'm not sure I want those people, anybody that has that workspace to see all my data. If we think of sensitive data in Dataverse, oh, do I want that? There's a bit of work to do. And when one security truly comes out, it will help iron some of this out. But today, it's brilliant. I can share my data without giving you full access to my environment. It does mean that my data could easily be put into Spark, Databricks, into notepads to be able to be taken in an app, Synapse, or other tools really quickly and just the data I want to give you, kind of. And my kind of in that sentence is, at the moment, I give you the table. We don't yet have the ability to give you a view. If this was SQL Server, I would have given you a view of a culmination of things and limited maybe what you get. At the moment, I can give you tables. So it's powerful to be able to take my data to the next step. It's slightly scary in the fact that security is a bit woolly. Would I do this with a real client yet today on anything that was sensitive? Not yet. Do I want everybody to play with it and learn and experiment? Absolutely, because this thing is moving even faster than Copilot in the fact that Microsoft are changing it and getting it better and polishing it and adding things in. The Databrick team, the Spark team are all part of this and they're running so fast we will never catch up. But as an administrator, it gives me a little bit of, a, oh, I'm not sure I want people having access to my stuff. In the current old data lakes, we had, we gave our data to a place and we had no control on who had access to it there either, really. What the danger slightly is more with Fabric is lots more people, anybody with Power BI can get to Fabric. Obviously, they've got to have access to my workspace. So it's not I'm throwing it out for the entire company, but it's still a little bit looser than putting it in a data lake. Is it going to improve? Definitely. Is it going to get much better with that single sign on? Definitely. But what's the benefit? Why would I want to do this? It's about being able to share that data down the path without any other kind of integration. It's super quick. It's almost, if I change a record, by the time I've opened the Power BI screen, it's there. It is really fast at collecting the data. So it's almost like a direct connection, but not quite. Now, I said there were some dangers to this at the beginning. If you had somebody build an application either in another environment or via um, .NET, C Sharp, that used an API to this, they can write back into your real dataverse at the moment. There's no stopping that change yet. Again, that's coming with one security where we can say, this is a show and tell, you can't come back in or you can write back to me if I want you to. So this is another reason I'm not ready for this to be truly live, but it's sure cute. It's really clever the way it does it. Now, I also just wanted to very quickly show you uh, another piece of it, but are we all right for time, Sarah? Yeah, yeah that's fine, yeah, go for it. That's fine. So the other side to this, if I come out and do it a slightly different way, what if I wanted to be able to get data back 
what we've got, remember that, those data endpoints, those SQL endpoints? What if I wanted to actually go and get some data? So let's see, I don't know whether I've got anything set up in this one. Let me go and have a quick look. Have I got anything where I can use SQL? Oh, let's let this look. So I actually happen to have a SQL connection, but let's go see if I can make a new one. Let's use that one. So let's imagine I want to get data. Somebody else has put data in Fabric, and I think, you know what, that I could make a spectacular app or automation off that. How do I get it back from Fabric? So I need to make a SQL connection, just as we would as if it was a real server. So let's go and look at that data again. Let's go on back to our workspace and go and find that endpoint. It's catching up, having its coffee. Here we go. Now it's going to show me the data the way I expected the first time. I love the demo gods. <laughs> Somebody asking a question. Are you okay? That's not going to you know, let me in. That's what I'm looking for. So the, that SQL connection string that we got which looks like a really awful long GUID. That's, that's our endpoint. Let's go back into our Power Apps. And this will seem really, really unintuitive. And I want that name. Let's see whether this behaves itself. Wasn't that obvious? So shall I go back and redo that so that makes sense? Let me come back. So to actually connect to a Fabric endpoint, nothing obvious in Microsoft World. I need to use the SQL endpoint that we had here. The SQL connection string equates to our server name. Now, again, it's, I'll, this will appear in my blog this week. So if you get if this doesn't make sense now, you can go and read it and look at it. The database name, again, absolutely not intuitive. It's actually the name of the work that this endpoint name here. How obvious. Make it easy for us, Microsoft, why don't you? It took people ages to figure out how to do this because it's not an obvious thing to do. So connection string is the server name. The endpoint name here is the database. Really easy, not. Let's let it connect. Now I can see any tables inside that fabric if I wanted to. So for argument's sake, see if I can find anything with any data in it. Let's pick this table. It's gonna have a think. And then what I can do once this once I connect to it, I could make a virtual table. I could be able to make an app from it. I could bring the data in. I could build a power automate off it. It does take it a little while. Once it's made its connection, it doesn't make it really clear. Oh, I've done it. I'm with you. Thank you very much. There's nothing clear on here. I can also add any custom names in here. So. It's not perfect yet, but if you use a little bit of patience and you follow some of the blogs, you can build some really cute things in here. We've done quite a few things already for clients where we've used virtual tables, which is a well-known technology to read the data back in to make apps. So maybe the data's come from SAP, maybe the data's come from a SQL on-prem, but I can now use that because it's in the cloud and its back connection is so much faster than using an API to be able to read it through to my data. My virtual tables become incredibly quick, even at large volume. So 
that's just a sort of a rough summary of some of the things that are there today. Have we got any questions anybody wants to ask so far? There's a question from Rosie in the Q&A. Claire, yeah. do you want to pick that up? Yeah, so Rosie, um, RS, RS, I've been sent to carry it over to Fabric. Um, yeah, it does feel like a backtrack. It's not there yet in the admin center. It's because they're actually updating it in the direct query mode in Fabric. So if I go back to the admin center screen here, and it let me catch up, I come back to this page. This is our shared point, and with that, my governance head on, this ability, any connections I make in Fabric appear here, and any of the security that appears in Fabric is supposed to help to make the connections correct here. What I fear from a Power Platform security point of view in here is the fact that a Power BI person that has access to that fabric can add more connections. I can make the connection both ways. I could make it in Power BI or I can make it in Power Platform. But in Power Platform, I can only make it as a Power Platform admin or a sys admin of my environment. In Power BI, I have to be the workspace admin. So some places that will be the same person. For those of you that work with large companies, are we really comfortable that something a workspace admin does that changes our world? And are they really happy that our changes to connections affect their world? We're really becoming interlinked. I'm totally with you, Rosie. There are a few things that we had in the original from Power BI reading into Dataverse. Those security model pieces and the way we connected are gone because they're trying to make it low code. We had this conversation with Power Platform five or six years ago. What? They're letting you just connect to what? We didn't have good DLP. We didn't have actions. This feels like we've gone back in time at the moment. What I can see is what I'm seeing in the one security model that's coming. It will fix probably 70% of this, but it's not perfect now, which is why I wouldn't use it for real data. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Anything anybody else would like to see? Does this make any sense? For those of you who've played with it already, do those little gotchas help you? The fact that we've got some stupid places, we've got things like the environment name, or we've got to be able to put the endpoint as a database name. Not obvious. I'm hoping that will help people get loose. Is there anything clear you want me to show you? Anything else that makes sense? No. Nope. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk security because that's my home ground. One of the things that we're seeing on what's going to come out in this one security model is it's going to start with the synapse piece first because that's where companies hold their biggest data. Fabric that we see in what we know is Power BI, those data sets, those lake houses. Let me go back in here. This is coming. The one security is going to start to honor the single sign on better. There is still going to be the ability for me to share this data with other people. So there's still that risk that my data lineage gets broken. I'm well created data for HR for onboarding. I want to be able to do reports. This is a perfect way to do it. But once my data's here, how do I control who has access? One interesting thing that's going to remain is Power Platform admins now become Power BI admins. More interesting than that, Power BI admins aren't Power Platform admins. We've suddenly ended up being a level above a Power BI admin. That's weird. That's new. It may not be for the best, but that's how it works today. 
So we will have some access in Power Platform. We're going to start to see some of that one security stuff starting to roll in. It's already in a few private previews. It's not yet affecting the platform as we know it, Power Platform, but it is going to come in here. What we can also see is this write back piece where lots of people go, oh, that's really cool. I can do synchronizing data. I could have an app in another environment updating your dataverse. Uh, I don't think I want it working that way. That, that's bonkers to put it into Fabric to edit it to get around different security. We've just spent a long time getting IP firewalls for environments to stop things like that. So we're almost stepping back on ourselves and causing ourselves a problem here. So as an admin, how can I stop this if I wanted to? If I'm in a high security business, how do I stop my data going out? It's difficult because any sysadmin at the moment that has access to a fabric, fake fabric workspace and is a power platform sysadmin for an environment, in theory, they can make that connection. There is some PowerShell that stops it, but Microsoft are updating it all the time. So my advice to those of you that have to do the admin, the security, is that if you do have fabric licensing in your business, you need to be very careful with your more sensitive dataverse data and actually work with the Power BI admins to make sure that these connections aren't being made. Now, this is another Microsoft mind bender to me is we can't just go, nope. We have to do things like keeping an eye on it. We can see what we make, but at the moment, if I jump back to here, I can't yet see what you're making, even as the Power Platform admin. This is going to be the first thing we see change. We're going to see as Power Platform admins, we will see this page change to the point where we can see every connection. Now, that still doesn't solve the problem of me stopping you doing stupid, but it does mean I can see that you've made a connection. And that's the first step. We are going to see some of this appearing in the Microsoft COE kit because, of course, Microsoft try it out there first before they put it into here. But what can I do today? The best thing I in the world I can suggest is you work with your Power BI admins to actually agree a plan of what's going to work. This will be brilliant. At the moment, it's a security headache. Give it two or three months, we will be very close. Give it a year, it will be spectacular. But today, this is a risk. This is a risk that is potentially going to stop some clients and some businesses that have better security from moving forward on their platform. And I don't want to be the scaremonger. I am truly honest that when I come in and pen test clients on, and I do ethical hacking, this is a hole unless we get it right. So how do we work together? What I would suggest is you work with the Power BI admins. Maybe you are the Power BI admin is that as we start to allow Fabric to explore, is work together. Maybe you do are the sysadmin of both, but let's see how you put it together. Our high security data, if we have it in Dataverse, has to be kept out of Fabric for today. Our things that are really useful, maybe sales data, up to you. I'm not comfortable yet with dynamics being loose here, but very soon this will be amazing. But if you've got data that's talking about oh, pallet and threes come in, the lorry tires broken, things that if it got shared within the company, it's not the end of the world. But if you've got data you do want to share with the rest of the world that you don't want to give the dataverse licensing to, it's an interesting question because then are we technically multiplexing? At the moment, the answer is no. 
if I have half my company with Power BI Pro licenses, but I only have 10 Dataverse Premium licenses, this is a way to share that data. Will it stay the same in the future? I suspect Microsoft licensing will find a way to bill us anyway. But at the moment, it's a great way to share that data to the next process, to the next thing, to analyze it. Those of you who use and love Synapse, this is great. Those of you who've got Snowflake, this is a great way to get that data out of Dataverse down that chain super fast, almost lightning quick to that next bit. You've got Spark, you've got Databricks, you want to grab the Dynamics data. This is fantastic for it. This is really the opening of us getting almost live data through to be able to do analytics. Is it secure enough yet? Not quite, but we're getting there. And it really is going to be big change for us. So governance head on, not quite there yet. Technology, it's spectacular. Any questions or have I sent you all to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Claire. You're keeping me awake. This is uh, fascinating. But there are a couple of questions uh, or comments and questions in the Q&A for you. Let me have a look and see what's come in. Um, we work down the right way. Um, Tom, how do you find the performance when calling one lake from Power Apps One? It's it's definitely faster than calling a Gen Lake Two. There's obviously a balance on limits. We've been testing it with I think the biggest data set we've got at the moment has got six million rows um, and maybe several hundred columns, and it. It must be two, two and a half times faster than calling from a traditional gen lake. Um, it's going to get better. The lines between transactional databases and what did you say there? Let's have a look. Warehouses. Yeah, the interesting thing here, and if I go back to Power BI just briefly and look at the workspace, it will come back. We automatically get made, if I click back onto that lake house, we get a warehouse built for us. Now, it's not doing it necessarily automatically yet, but that's the plan that our unstructured data, we can start to automate that unstructured data that's a live link going into a warehouse. It, they've tried mirroring and it doesn't work, obviously, but to be able to have a live link of unstructured data and us having an almost live warehouse behind it. This is the really cute part with Fabric. We've got unstructured in the model and we've got a warehouse automatically made for us. That's mine in my workspace. It's not some big ugly SQL server somewhere. I as an individual can have my own little warehouse. Good and bad, I've got data everywhere again. I'm sure the SQL admins will cry because data has been spread everywhere. The concept is the data can easily be delegated. I'm definitely seeing that blur where we're going from lots of simple transactions into lots of mini warehouses. Does this end up meaning we end up with data everywhere again? It's kind of my fear, but it's also very clever. I think it's going to take, like Power Platform did, a couple of years to figure itself out. Um, yeah, looking to see you on there. Thank you, Peter, for your comment. I don't think there's anything else. Uh, whilst we get Tom said, can replace can it replace storing data locally? Um, I'm not sure. It it depends on what you want to do with your data. You talk about is it more performant? If I've got data that's maybe huge data from a SQL server on premise, putting it in Fabric and using virtual tables to be able to read it into Dataverse to do apps off, definitely much faster. Is it faster than building the data in Dataverse in the first place? Not really. So Dataverse has still got that super quick speed at the moment. And obviously, I can do offline with Dataverse. But this is so much faster because it's actually part of the family. It's built within its own connections. 
So compared to me putting this to a SQL in Azure, it's faster by a large margin to have it in Fabric and then build an app on it. Now we've still got some dodgy security models to deal with, but pure performance of big data to be able to run in an app to get that performance, this is gonna be a way we can really look at it. Now, it obviously depends what you need to do, you read, you write, your patching, but this is interesting. This is definitely to be able to read large volumes of data faster than doing it from an Azure SQL. This looks promising. As I said to Sarah, I don't shut up. So there you go. <laughs> That's good. You've covered a lot there. Um, I don't know if there's any more questions. So James nodded a lot through there. This <laughs> That was really cool. Thank you very much, Claire. It was awesome. Yeah, it's really, really informative. I've I've not really played around uh, played around with one with, with one like yet. I'm I'm super super keen to to get playing with it. Really, that is really good. Thank you. Yeah. The the only thing you've got uh, if you sign up for the fabric test, it keeps an endless fifty nine or fifty eight days at the moment. While although it's gone GA, it's still allowing. Can you see at the top of mine? It says fabric trial fifty eight days. It's been like that since it started. They will okay. catch up with us eventually, but you get at least 60 days to go and play and start to explore those settings. Um, the initial piece about making all the connectors is in my blog. The blog that will go out this weekend will be about creating virtual tables off it and how to do it the other way around. So you can follow those if you're interested. Yeah, that's really cool. Thank you very much. Um, just just as, as a quick question, where do you think that the long term strategy is for, for Microsoft between Fabric and Power Platform? Do you think like Power BI will start to sit more and more underneath the, the Power Platform umbrella, do you think? It's really interesting because I was quite amazed to find out we had admin rights to that, that they don't have admin rights to us. I, I think there's going to be a blend. But because Fabric and that whole piece all the way up to sign up still needs to have some control, I think Power BI will start to snuggle more in. It's always kind of been the ugly sister, if you want, where it's described as Power Platform, but it's got its own tools, its own admin center. For me, yeah. what I'm seeing is I think the two admin centers will start to bleed into each other. I'm already seeing it today. So I think that they will become much more close there may still be slightly different screens but fabric itself is this big mushy mess of stuff a bit like our platforms a mushy mess of stuff but it's interesting because i also see power platforms sliding more under m365 as well so they end up as we've seen with PVA going into Copilot Studio, yeah. some of our controls are disappearing into M365. We're absorbing Power BI. And I think we've gone from those of three original clouds that we had years ago to one thing uh, of everything sitting under M365 with Azure around us. I think we'll all yeah. blend into each other eventually. But I suspect it will be a slow road because Microsoft mm -hmm. have got too much old code in there. Cool, thank you. But uh, no, that was awesome, like really informative and something I've not seen before as well, just sort of looking at how the, the crossover is happening and, and some insights into the future as well. I think that'll be really useful. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Special thanks to Claire. Really appreciate your time and the effort that you put into today. Super grateful. Mm -hmm. Take care, all. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Thank you very thank much. You.